certainly we enjoy uh, special services every time we have church, but tonight is certainly a special occasion as we ordain two men, uh, officially ordain them into the gospel ministry. Uh, both of these men have uh, been in our church for some time. Uh, Stephen has grown up here, um, and Mike in many ways has grown up here, and uh, both are uh, products of our uh, Bible college and our church here, and uh, the Zarns will be leaving tomorrow. Uh, brother, uh, they have accepted a position. Uh, Stephen's accepted a, a position as an assistant pastor at the First Baptist Church of East Bay, not too far <coughs> south of us, and so we're certainly excited for that. And uh, Brother Mike is, we're stuck with Brother Mike. He's, 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 he's still here. Uh, we put up with him because of Crystal, uh, but be that as it may, uh, Mike is very involved in our in our ministries here, uh, preaching two or three times uh, every Sunday, and he's uh, uh, he's he does a lot for uh, the ministry. And so, uh, bo- I say officially ordained them because both of these men, both of these couples, are very involved uh, in our ministry here. And so, we're uh, thankful for what they do. Of course, uh, we'll miss. Krista, uh, but they'll be, uh, the Zarns will be leaving tomorrow, and uh, I'm proud of both of these couples. Uh, I'm, proud, I'm proud of all of our couples. Um, this is a, you, you realize that we have a special place here, I hope. Um, there are products of this ministry, some serve in full-time ministry, some faithfully serve as a layman all over this world, and today products of this ministry uh, preach not just in different states, but on different continents, and it's been said, not by me, but it's been said and repeated many, many times uh, <coughs> before I say it now, uh, the, the reach of a church is not determined by its seating capacity, but by its reaching capacity, and the ministry of the Maine Baptist Church literally reaches around the world, and that's something uh, that we should be thankful for, and uh, I tried to add up all the couples that have been commissioned from this church, and, and quite frankly, I couldn't do it. Um, and that's a testimony of the, the, the length of faithfulness of God's people, but yet the yieldedness of young men and young ladies and them dedicating themselves to the Lord. Uh, but I'm proud of all of our young couples, whether they go into the ministry or not. It's not easy in this world we live in to be a dedicated Christian. It's not easy. I don't know that it's ever been easy, but it's certainly not easy today. And so <coughs> I'm certainly proud of these two couples. They've been patient. I can recall many conversations with Stephen about his desire to serve the Lord, and I, I think God wants me to do this, and I think God wants me to do this, and I kept saying, Stephen, you need a wife. Uh, see how easy that was? You get married and you're gone. I mean, if, you, if you'd have listened five years ago, we could, have already, we could have already done this, but, you know, he's never been a quick learner, but, uh, but uh, certainly watching how God has put that together and of course, uh, Mike, <laughs> Mike and Crystal and their uh, faithfulness. And so my message tonight uh, will be to us as a church <laughs> to remind us of some things, uh, but also um, specifically to remind uh, <laughs> these men of their responsibility as a, as a preacher of the gospel, uh, remind uh, their, their spouses of the importance of that. And uh, I thank God for... Uh, men who are still willing to answer the call uh, to preach the gospel. I thank God for ladies uh, who are willing to submit to, as, as her husband yields himself. And uh, uh, there's a lot of things that can keep a man out of the ministry, and a rebellious wife is one of them. And so uh, in this case, um, <coughs> we don't have to worry about that um, did I say that, Crystal, how you wanted me to say that? Is that okay, all right. Uh, we, we, we don't have to worry about that, uh, but uh, uh, certainly <coughs> thankful for uh, them. And I'm reminded at times like this of all the Sunday school teachers. Uh, you feel old when you see <coughs> those who are in your children's Sunday school class, uh, all the Sunday school teachers who've invested, <coughs> all the different individuals who've invested, family who kept uh, them in, 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 in close to the things of God, um, keeping them <laughs> in a Bible preaching church. And so uh, tonight, uh, certainly I believe this pleases the Lord, but I want this to be a reminder to us, a challenge to, uh, <laughs> to us as a church, 
of the importance of um, uh, the uh, local church and the ministry that we have. Acts chapter number 13, <coughs> in reading verse number 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and, and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, <coughs> and Manning, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord <coughs> and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed they and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Let me just pause there and I'll read verse 5. Uh, the gospel ministry is not something to take lightly. Uh, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to get ahead of myself, but it's a work that God does. And God worked through men who were fasting and praying. They were in a state of seeking to get an answer from God, seeking to please God. I want to remind us, as I've already said, that we have produced as a church uh, couples throughout the decades, many, many, many scores of them who are serving the Lord today. It takes a faithful church, but it takes a work of God. It takes a church seeking the will of God. And I think more churches today would produce more fruit if we remember uh, that is certainly something we look for from the Lord. Look at verse 4. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence <coughs> they sailed to Cyprus. And then when they were at Salamis, <coughs> excuse me, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. I want to draw your attention back to verse 4. We'll look at the entire text tonight. But I'll get my title from verse number 4. So they being sent forth. The title of my message tonight is those two words, sent forth. Let's ask the Lord to help us. Father, I, I pray tonight that uh, this would be a special night for certainly uh, these two couples, but certainly a special night for us. Uh, Father, I pray that we honor you uh, with our actions this evening. I pray that as <coughs> the Word of God is preached, may the Spirit of God uh, direct me, guide me, and fill me. And Father, I pray that we as a church would be ready to hear and listen while some of the comments will certainly be directed at the two men tonight. May we realize that <coughs> the scripture is an admonishment for us as well. <coughs> I pray that we'll be blessed by what's done this evening. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Certainly an important part of the New Testament church, the main purpose of the church is to reach the world with the gospel. As the word of God is preached, the word of God is taught, on a week-by-week -week basis. A byproduct of that is the growth of a Christian. I say it often, I'll say it again, I'll, you can grow as a Christian if you'll be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and allow the Word of God to minister to you. Uh, hear the Word of God taught. Hear the Word of God preached. Then on a daily basis, you spend time in the Word of God. The byproduct of the Scripture, the supernatural book, it washes us. It cleanses us. It's going to make us more like our Savior. But as we are part of a church where we can grow and be taught and encourage one another. Uh, don't raise your hand tonight, but how many of you, you're, you're just excited about life tonight. Have you, everything is good. You're encouraged. You're in a good, no, it is time change weekend, so maybe this is a bad illustration, but you're just in a great mood. Things are good. You may be like that tonight, but I promise you not everybody is. While somebody's on a mountain, somebody's going through a valley. Part of why we want to, we're part of a church and the way God designed it is when we're on a valley to encourage, we're on the mountaintop to encourage those when they're valley. Because the time's coming when that role's going to be reversed. And we, ed we get edified in the church. We get edified, why? So we can reach the world with the gospel. The most important thing in the mind of God today is not a political revolution, but a spiritual revolution in the world being reached with the gospel. The only thing that matters, no matter who you are or what your background is or, or, or the way you grew up or didn't grow up, uh, wh what part of the world you've ever lived in, the most important thing when your life is ends is whether or not you've ever trusted Christ as your Savior. 
It's going to be an amazing thing when we stand uh, before God and those that who have, who have never trusted Christ, they stand before God and all of a sudden there's one opinion that matters. Every, a lot of people have religious opinions until they draw that last breath. That's the most important thing. And we as a church have been commissioned. The last thing is we know before Christ ascended into heaven, he commissioned his church to go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth to preach the gospel. It's his desire that man be saved. In order to do that, the church has got to send forth. I have to be honest with you, as a pastor, I, I, I would love to keep all of our people here. I would love to keep all of our couples here. I'd love to have those that we've sent out stay here. Why, why do y'all want to leave me? I, I would love to have y'all here. But quite frankly, it's not God's plan. I pray often God call out the ones that are supposed to go and keep the ones here that are supposed to stay, bring in the ones that you'd have to be here so that we can build a work for you. But it, it is important because there are people in other parts of this world that don't have what we have. They don't have a church, and it is God's will for them to have one. So part of God's plan is for us to send forth. Selfishly, we'd like to keep everybody here. Because we, we do love one another. One thing that is always common about our church is the spirit that we have. And I believe we do have a Christ-like love for one another. It is a, it is a special thing. But we are taught through the scripture. And we've been through the book of Acts in days past. And it is part of God's plan to send forth. So I believe the Bible teaches in order for us to be a New Testament church... One, first of all, the, the Word of God has got to be preached. The Word of God has got to be taught. The mission has got to be to reach the lost world with the gospel. But you will also find the scriptural precedent to send forth. Now tonight, towards the conclusion of the service, we'll have the symbolic laying on the hands, the separating, the, the separating unto the Lord uh, the gospel, to the gospel ministry. We find in Acts chapter number 13, we find a, a precedent uh, for what we'll part participate in tonight. But I want us to, to, I want to make four statements tonight concerning our text and this idea of sending forth. And then uh, we'll, we'll get into the end of the service. Number one, let me say, men are called and sent forth or sent from and through the ministry of the local church. Men are called and sent forth sent from and through the ministry of the local church. What we're doing is important. What we're doing, we have the authority of the Scripture. And Brother Mike and Brother Stephen, you're being ordained to the gospel ministry under the authority of the Emmanuel Baptist Church. Sent forth out of the authority of the Emmanuel Baptist Church. You say, Pastor, with this, why, why, why do you make an emphasis on this? Let's read verse number one. Now, there were in the church. Scripture doesn't say they knew about the church. Scripture doesn't say they were in the church on Easter and Christmas. Scripture says they were in the church. I am convinced there's a lot of Christians that God would do a work in their life if they were in the church. It is still an institution that Christ not only founded, he died for. Now, they were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers. And then notice verse number 3. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they, the church, sent them away. Uh, the, the Preaching the gospel is not a vocation. It's a call. It's a commissioning. It's still a work of the local church, God's church. It, <coughs> men are called and sent forth. I think of both of these couples. 
I think of both of these men and as we met this afternoon with uh, the ordination council and they gave their testimony of salvation. Both of them gave a testimony of salvation in the instrumental vital role the church played in them hearing the gospel. It was in the church they felt the call to preach. Now, there are a lot of activities in this world that <coughs> there's nothing in, wrong with. There's a lot of good things you can be a part of, and there's nothing wrong with. But isn't it amazing what God does in the church? Uh, when souls are saved in the church, when God begins to work in the heart of a man in the church, we find that <coughs> men are called and sent from and through the ministry of the local church. You men that go out, I know, I know you very well, and Mike, as you continue to work here, and Stephen, as you go out, don't ever get away from the importance of the church. And for all of us, don't ever, don't ever get away from the importance of the church. It's amazing to me what Christians will miss church for. It's amazing to me. Uh, they won't miss work for it. They won't miss the family reunion for it. They won't miss the ball game for it. But you know, church just isn't that important. Don't forget the, man, think of how many good things happened to me at church. And I, uh, uh, I, I you know, I, I felt the call to preach at a church service. You know, I, 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 I found my wife. In church, man, good thing. No, I think no. Good, good thing. Good things happen at church. Number statement number two. God calls man unto Him, for Him. Look at verse two. Sep and they minister to the Lord. Who are they ministering to? God. Let me just remind all of us as a church. I I like coming to church because it helps me. Uh, if, it's, if it's okay, if it's, is it okay to say this? My, my, own, my, preach, my own preaching helps me. Uh, it helps some of you too if you stay awake once in a while. I love the music. It helps me. I enjoy it. Believe it or not, fellowshipping with you helps me too. Now, some of you are a little more discouraging than the others, but, but the church helps me. Come to church and it'll help you. Let me remind, say, Pastor, we're here. You, I just want to remind us of the benefit of the house of God. But never forget, we're not supposed to have church for us. We're supposed to have church to please God. We obey this book not to please us, not to please the society we live in, but because it pleases God. They were ministering to the Lord. They were focused on Him, and they fasted. And in the midst of their attention on God, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work. God calls man unto him for him. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul. Separate them to me. See, the, 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 the preacher of the gospel, the man of God, belongs to God. He's separated unto him. And don't you men forget this. Your first responsibility is to God. I, I don't read any polls before I determine what I'll walk out here and preach. I don't put out a, a poll on social media. Should I do this or should no? It is God's word. It is God's church. I still believe God is big enough through prayer and fasting and study to put a message on the heart of the man of God. The man of God belongs unto God. Don't you forget that. First person, really the only person that a preacher ought to be seeking to please is God. He calls men unto him. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, why? For the work. Unto him, for him. What's a wonderful thing to, do, to work for God? It's a wonderful thing. Uh, oh, work is so undervalued and underestimated. I spoke about this at the father-son camping trip. Man, we need a re revival in our country of just old-fashioned work. 
you know, it's, it's not, it's, there's nothing wrong with, with earning your keep by work. And this has nothing to do with ordination, but good night. Work. Train up our children to work. But God's work, we were surprised. Say, oh, I want, you, I want to be involved in God's work. Okay, here's just some work. Well, I didn't know it was going to be work. It's called God's work. It's work. He separates unto himself men for himself the work. There's no joy like serving God. You know, God can give you blessings that nobody else can give you. Well, I gave up so much to be, you know, I, I believe there's Christians that their health is as good as it is, as long as it is, because it's the blessing of God. It doesn't matter how much overtime you put in. It, you, I haven't seen health on, on shelf number 13 at Walmart. I think that's the only thing they don't sell. But you, you get the point I'm making? God separates men unto himself tonight. We are acknowledging the fact that, Stephen, you feel a call in your life to preach the gospel. Brother Mike, you feel a call in your life to preach the gospel. And to both of your wives, I would remind you that your husband has been set apart by God to do a specific thing for him. And it's good for us to be reminded. I, I, it's, it's bittersweet when we have God calls laborers out. But when God calls them unto him, they have a work that they're to do for him. Statement number three. We find in verses two through four, we find man's calling and the church's sending is a work of the spirit. Man's calling and the church's sending is a work of the spirit. Notice verse two. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said. Who's doing the work? The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. Verse 4, so they being sent forth. Who sent them forth? The Holy Ghost. It's a work of God. Hey, <laughs> the calling of God is a serious thing. And often, and I know it's an emphasis that I place, often we as a church and a ministry like ours, we put the emphasis on our young people put the emphasis on our church. We want, we want everybody to surrender their life to God, but especially, oh, what a great joy to use your life to preach the gospel. Use your life to serve God. In my, say my office, my office is all over the place right now, but I have a map. I have cities that, to my knowledge, there's no church. And I pray that God would send somebody there to start to be faithful, to start a Bible-preaching church. I pray for laborers. There are nations on our earth, you look at their population, and just a handful of missionaries there. An entire nations without the gospel. What a tragic thought. And I, I'll be honest with you, and I think you know this because of the emphasis that I keep before us. I have a burden for the world to get the gospel. I have a burden for our city. I, I don't know if you pay much attention to what goes on in our city there's a lot of good things that go on in our city, but the crime and the different things that go on is, is tragic. What's the answer to that? Government reform and social programs? Well, the greatest answer in the world is for a man's heart to be converted. That's the answer. I mean, give us a hundred more Bible preaching churches in Jacksonville and watch the difference. But I can't call anybody to the gospel ministry. I can't choose anyone. And mom and dad, let me caution you, there's two extremes. There's the extreme when you see God working in the heart of your child. You're like, no, God, don't call them. 
And why is it that you're always afraid of your kid going to Africa? I mean, that's every, I mean, you gave that illustration today. It's like, I, well, if I surrender preach, I'm going to Africa. Why is that? Oh, I, I'm afraid of what would happen if God would call my child. There's the other stream of that, that we want it so bad for our child that we put something in their heart and mind that God has nothing to do with. And we got to be very careful of that because man's calling and the church's sending is the work of the Spirit. It's the ministry is certainly a good thing, but only God can put you in the ministry. And if God puts you in the ministry, it's something you ought to take seriously. If God doesn't put you in, and by the way, you're all in the ministry tonight. Yeah. We need to get this idea of our heads that there's hired help and we just sit around and let all the hired help do, do the ministry. That's, that's not what God designed it to be. But man's calling in the church ascending is a work of the Spirit. And guys, let me remind you of that. The same Spirit that called you is the same Spirit of God <laughs> that will guide you. And you need to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let me remind you before I make the last statement tonight, the Holy Spirit doesn't fill dirty vessels, but clean ones. The life of a preacher is a clean life. I say this often, and I've made several hospital visits. I've made several in-home visits this week. I mean, there's life and death situations, and somebody calls and says, can you come to my house? I have a loved one who's, who's, who's close to death. I don't know any other way to say it, but they don't want a dude showing up. They don't want somebody who they shared a martini at dinner Friday night to show up. Isn't it amazing in those situations you want a clean man of God? The life of a man of God is to be clean. It's to be holy. And by the way, the verse of Scripture still in the Bible, be ye holy for I am holy, that's not just the preachers. It's a clean life. Statement number four. Very simple reminder. They're sent for the purpose of preaching not position. Verse number five, and when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. That was their purpose. <laughs> they were sent for the purpose of preaching, not position. I think the reason why God has blessed both of you men in different ways, and the reason why God is using you both of these, we don't know, both of these men, these couples are, couples are very involved in our week-to-week -week ministry. Uh, whether it's preaching to children in the children's ministry. And don't, don't think that's not important. It's vital. There's a host of kids that we pick up each and every week that they hear, it's here that they hear that somebody loves them. It's here that they hear that Jesus died for them. It's here that they hear for the first time that God has a specific and a special purpose for them. It's here that they are reminded that, that they are important to God. They are special to God. And these men have been very involved with that through the years. I know they both have been involved in our nursing home ministry. And while... We're getting our Sunday afternoon nap. They're in nursing homes ministering to really, quite frankly, people that get neglected and forgotten. Say, Pastor, why do you bring that up? Because the call and being sent is about the preaching, not the position. It's about the opportunity to fulfill the call that God has placed on your life. Preaching the gospel of Christ is the greatest privilege and responsibility that man can have. <laughs> There's nothing more important than a preacher. I don't say that to put any glory on myself or these men because it's God that does the work. It's God that does the calling. 
We need preachers in this world. We need bold preachers. We need spirit-filled preachers. And quite frankly, we need preachers that can't be bought, influenced, silenced. God didn't call me to be politically correct. He called me to preach the gospel. I'm not running for office. We're to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you meant, <laughs> I think of, and in the ordination council today, the word servant was used several times to describe both of you. I don't know what your wives think about that, but what you do at home, that's a whole different story. But servant was described. And I think of King Saul. And that in the fall of King Saul were those words that Samuel said to him, when thou wast little in thine own eyes. Don't ever forget who you are, what God saved you from. The call is not on, the call is not because of you. And I can say this because I live it, it's in spite of you. One of the amazing things of God, he uses sinful men to preach a perfect book about a perfect Savior. <laughs> so tonight, we as a church, uh, we ordain two more men to the gospel ministry. Of course, the Zarns are leaving us, and we'll certainly miss them, but we're thankful that we have a part. Church, I want you to realize something. I'll use Brother, Brother Stephen as an example. He's going to have the responsibility of a youth pastor. They'll both be working in the Christian school there. You have other responsibilities. Every life they touch, we have a part in. Think about that. Through our Operation Light on the continent of Africa, <coughs> people were saved today through those men, those churches that we had a part in. We have a part in that. The Stanleys who are ministering in Spain, and then we have men in different states, and we, we have a product of our church all over this world who drove buses today and taught Sunday school classes and kept the nursery so that others could, keep, could hear the gospel. Literally, they're all over the world. We have a part in that. I say that to remind us of how important we are. The, those that are keeping the nursery tonight, they're important. You keep working the nursery ministry, that's important. You're an usher, you help park cars, you work the security, you, you help people find a seat, that's important. Church member, when you put a smile on your face and you encourage someone and, and you notice that someone's having a hard time and you write them a note and you drop it in the mail, is that still a thing or should I say, when you notice them and you send them an email or however it applies and, and you want to encourage them and you want to be a blessing to them and every time you, 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 you sacrifice being in the church service and and you'll go uh, run a bus and pick somebody up, or you'll, you'll be working in a ministry and teach a class, or, or every person. You think about those that worked in our nursing home ministry today, and, and when they trust Christ as their Savior, they are literally snatched out of the fire. What a privilege. What, everything that goes on, we have a part in. What a joy. You know how awesome heaven's going to be? We really don't. We can imagine. And friend, I can imagine a lot. I wonder how many people are gonna, we're going to bump into in heaven. <laughs> it's going to be a result of the faithfulness of the people that may know about this church. Sending forth, sending forth, sending forth, sending forth. We have a part in that. That's why it's important that we stand on this book. I'm not interested in another way because there's one way. It's important that we keep the focus, God's focus, our focus. It's important as the Apostle Paul spoke to Timothy, faithful man to faithful man. I intend to be faithful. When you guys are old like me 
I wasn't going to say like Dr. Farber, but that's just cruel. I mean, if, when you guys are, I intend to still be preaching the same book. I intend to be faithful. You be faithful. Don't change what you believe. Keep your focus what your focus ought to be. Church, we have responsibility. You're probably tired of me using this illustration, but I'm going to use it again. The great D.L. Moody, who God used to shake two continents for God, estimated three million people walked the aisles for salvation in his meetings. That's just in his meetings. Walk the aisles for salvation. What a mighty, mighty giant for God. He's going to have a lot of rewards in heaven. But I know somebody who's going to have one more. And that's the Sunday school teacher who got a burden for a 15-year-old teenage boy and went and won him to Christ. We don't always see the immediate fruit of our faithful labor. So what are we supposed to do? Just keep doing the work of God. Just keep telling everybody you know about Christ. Just, just, just get as close to Him as you possibly can, can get to Him. Hey, don't, 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 don't get caught up in all the, the, the pettiness of this world and all the excuses. There, there, there's, there's no, by the way, there's no reward in heaven for, for, for internet uh, debate, uh, debating of theology. Don't get caught up in it. Just serve God. Just do what's right because you never know whose life you might touch. And whose life you touch, it's important because we don't know how God will use them. Father, I pray that... Today...